Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Tano's television coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. As the D8 summit in Istanbul, Turkey ends, President Buhari asked a group of developing countries to step up trade and investment among its members. Man jumps off the Ukoi Link Bridge into the Lagos Lagoon. State Emergency Agency says operation to recover his body continues tomorrow. All Progressives Congress vows to keep its promises to the people of Anambra State as it kicks off campaign ahead of the November the 18th governorship election in the state. And at least 60 killed in two separate attacks targeting Shia worshippers in Afghanistan. A quick reminder now that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. And log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Now let's take a look at some of those pictures that were sent in to us. We begin with this video from the Lagos Abeokuta Expressway showing a flooded road. Now, according to our eyewitness reporter, the road has been in this state for years and he's calling on the federal government to fix it. Next is this image from Ikui in Lagos State showing a man whom our eyewitness reporter says is a member of staff of the electricity distribution company in Lagos. He was alleged to have been assaulted by policemen while disconnecting some lines and he's calling for justice. We end with this set of photos from the Turun Power and Memuna Warzo in Kaduna State showing core members carrying out humanitarian services including the renovation of abandoned boreholes. Eyewitness reporter says he's impressed with their efforts and calls on others to seek ways to improve their communities. Thanks a lot for all your pictures. Do send us some more. To this unfortunate story where a man has jumped off the Leki Ikoi bridge into the Lagos Lagoon in an apparent suicide bid. The man identified as Olusheyi Adekunle, who appeared to be on his way to work, dropped his bag before taking the plunge. His ATM card and other items were recovered from the scene. Officials of the Lagos Waterways Authority, the State Emergency Management Agency and the Marine Police rushed to the scene to attempt to rescue him. According to the general manager of the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Tiamiru Adishino, who spoke to Channel's television, the search had to be called off after some hours when they failed to recover his body. This latest incident comes barely six months after a medical doctor, Orwell Oji, jumped to his death from the third mainland bridge into the Lagos Lagoon. Of course, we reported that that search for his body is to continue tomorrow. The report came to the call center in Alausa that uh, a certain man jumped into the lagoon and uh, we immediately activated the response mechanism in the state. The Lagos uh, Waterways Management Agency, the, uh, the Marine Police and my team were all there at the waterfront. And uh, we gathered from people who witnessed what happened, especially the staff of LCC that runs the bridge, that uh, their camera caught him on, uh, at about 9.58 a.m. when a man came around and uh, he, from the bag, we got there, he pulled off his trousers, uh, put off his shoes and shirt, and you know, and, and flew into the lagoon. Um, for more than three hours, the rescue team were on the waterways trying to patch through the old place. But for now, uh, we are on watch as it were. Uh, they put a stop to the search first. We are on, are on watch, you know, looking for where. But the men are still around the waterways looking out for anything that will indicate where the man is, uh, you know, uh, can be found. No suicide note was found in the bag. Uh, I, I understand they also found his phone and a few personal effects. But the police are in custody of all of that and we will be working together to get the details. Um. 
very um, unfortunate one there indeed. Now we cross over to Abuja. Now here's Linda Akigbe. Linda. Hello, Ijoma. The Vice President, Professor Yemil Shibajo, has raised hope of the early completion of the second Niger Bridge following the release of funds for the project by the federal government. Professor Shibajo announced this during the All Progressives Congress governorship campaign flag off in the commercial city of Onicha today. On his part, the APC flag bearer in the election, Mr. Tony Wunye, told students, youths, and all the residents to expect a good time if he is voted into power. The event was attended by the big wigs in the party, including the chairman, Chief Odije Oyegun. <laughs> With less than one month to the Anambra governorship election, the All Progressives Congress appears set for the race. APC! That is the reason the crowd is here with the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, and the APC National Chairman, John Uyegun, leading other dignitaries to canvass for support for one of their own. I am the only... APC governor in the southeast. I'm alone. I'm here today to ask of all of you to give me someone, a brother, to be with me in Abuja. Support is also coming for the party in the southeast from as far as the northwest. Why am I here to support Tony to be the governor? Because whether you're a Muslim or Christian or pagan, we want development, we want progress, we want unity in diversity, we want true federalism. The national leadership of the APC promises to throw its weight behind Mr. Toyin Woye, the flag bearer. A good president, quiet man, soft man, a man of law and order, a man of due process. We want to give him a present. What better present can you give him? What better present can you give him unless you elect Tony Woye as the next governor of Anambra State? If the electorate in Anambra State votes the party come November, they will be positioning themselves to enjoy more from the center. This assurance is coming from no other than the vice president. The second Niger Bridge, we have been talking about it for a long time. But for the first time, the president, President Muhammad Buhari, went by himself to negotiate the facility to do that second Niger Bridge. And that is why the second Niger Bridge is in our, cur in our current budget and we have provided for it. For the party flag bearer, Tony Woye, education is among the sectors that he's promised to give much attention to. We promise you Basri, Basri in our our indigenous students, we promise you that your hostels will be a place where you can live comfortably and learn. Should we give Oye this flag? Do we have your permission? Will you vote? As supporters urge him on, party leaders hand the party flag to Mr. Tony Woye, expecting him to end the race in victory come November the 18th this year. Away from politics, the federal government has released new statistics on the nation's education sector compiled from a study conducted on the sector between 2014 and 2016. The new statistics are part of the government's efforts to ensure that critical statistics and related information in each sector are up to date to most effectively inform policy planning and implementation. The new set of statistics are released at a time Nigeria's education sector is pivoting towards research and development-based curricula to equip Nigerian students for the global economy. Our correspondent Adjuri Ngilali reports. Now please rise for the national anthem. They are galvanized by an education sector in need of resuscitation. Education statistics are vital as they provide us with clear objective. But what exactly are the problems and how do you solve them? Hard facts and detailed analysis form the starting point. 
Just back from a brief medical leave, Minister of State for Education, Professor Anthony Amwuka, says the new statistical digest is one of many innovations set to invigorate policy implementation in the education sector. The state fails if you falsify data and provide accurate information, provide information maybe by increasing your population so as to get more revenue from the federal government. Well, that is not working anymore. Now we want to make sure that we develop our education system using accurate and reliable data. And that's why what we're doing today is very essential. Uh, same means we have a lot of work to do. Uh, our development partners have assured you that uh, funding won't be the problem. Uh, so that whatever they do, supplemented by the federal government, we should be able to generate adequate and reliable data, not approximation. Representing the 36 state commissioners of education, one commissioner says the new statistics are born out of effective cooperation between local and state institutions and the federal government. It is actually difficult, especially, to track down those who are operating illegal schools in our nation today. The River State Government is tackling uh, that issue. As I speak, we have, uh, we have set up machineries in motion to ensure that all schools that are illegal operating in school in river states are shut down. Today's launch is another proof of the present administration's resolve. Challenged by incomplete data in some areas due to the presence of unaccredited schools, officials commit to ensuring a more timely release of the next edition with targeted action against schools which have not been accredited to educate children in the country. Ajuri Ingilali, Channels Television News. Now on to legal matters. A federal high court judge has withdrawn from hearing the case filed against the People's Democratic Party and Independent National Electoral Commission. The suit is asking INEC not to recognize the delegates from the state's chapter of the party for the PDP National Convention in December. At today's sitting, Justice Ibrahim Buba stated that he had not, been, he had not seen a petition that accuses him of bias in the case. Justice Buba therefore recused himself from the case and said he would be returning the case file to the chief judge for reassignment. This is not the usual sight you see in court. Elderly women and a few men clad in their usual traditional attires carrying placards with different inscriptions against Justice Ibrahim Buba of the Federal High Court. It appears this is the reason why the judge withdrew himself from the case, centering around the leadership tussle of the Ogun State chapter of the People's Democratic Party. The suit was filed by a member of the PDP National Working Committee, Adiwole Adinyaju, against the Independence National Electoral Commission, the PDP, and the PDP National Caretaker Committee and its chairman, Senator Ahmed Makrafi. The plaintiffs are seeking court order restraining INEC from monitoring and supervising any Congress of the PDP conducted by the defendants for election of any persons into the executive committee of the PDP in Ogun State. They want the courts to bar INEC from accepting or giving recognition to any person that emerges from such Congress until May 2020, when the tenure of the Adebayo Dio led executive committee in Ogun State would expire. At the resumed hearing, Justice Ibrahim Buba stated that he had cited a petition against him, accusing him of being biased. The petition accuses Justice Buba of favoring a section of members of the People's Democratic Party who are bent on frustrating the smooth operation of the party. According to the plaintiff, this petition, as well as the protest, is just a way of blackmailing the judiciary. What you see today is a situation where politicians have decided to gang up against the judiciary just to stop a judge from doing his job. The case, which would have continued today, has been stalled. This can only mean one thing. Uh, the implication of that is that nothing is stopping the convention and the Congress of the PDP 
coming up in a matter of uh, a day or two and that uh, everything will go on smoothly. When a judge recuses himself from a case because of a potential conflict of interest, the responsibility now falls on the chief judge of the Federal High Court to reassign the case to another judge. Victoria Ido, reporting for Channels Television News. When your news at 10 returns, latest reports from investment banking firm Afrinvest indicates 16.4% growth in gross, gross earning from Nigeria's banking sector in 2016. That's some business news to join us again.